modern warfare doctrine. The first 10 minutes after a U.S. aircraft carrier becomes a potential target are the most crucial phase. This scenario is not a depiction of a real event, but rather an observation based on military doctrine, publicly known technological capabilities, and training patterns frequently discussed by defense analysts. In the early stages, the conflict does not yet take the form of physical attack, but rather a contest of information, sensors, and speed of decision-making. The initial moments begin with China's attempt to confirm position of the U.S. Carrier Strike Group, CSG. A multi-layer detection network encompassing surveillance satellites, over-the-horizon radar, surveillance ships, and maritime drones attempts to accurately determine the carrier's location. The primary challenge in this phase is not weapons capability, but maintaining tracking of a constantly moving target. U.S. aircraft carriers are designed to minimize their electronic signature and frequently employ emissions control, EMKIN, making the tracking process extremely complex. As soon as there is an indication that China has successfully locked onto a target, the U.S. early warning system kicks into action. Aegis destroyers, E, 2D Hawkeye early warning aircraft and satellites and the Joint Command Network immediately increase their alertness. Within minutes, the CSG will shift formation, adjust course, and prepare layers of air and anti-missile defenses. At this stage, no weapons have been launched yet, but both sides are already at full combat readiness. In the following minutes, electronic warfare becomes the dominant element. The U.S. will attempt to disrupt the enemy's sensors through jamming, signal deception, and defensive air maneuvers. At the same time, China must ensure that targeting data remains accurate despite intense electronic interference. Failure to maintain the kill chain, the chain from detection to attack, at this stage could render the entire offensive effort ineffective. In the six to eight minutes, escalation is both psychological and strategic. The presence of U.S. fighter jets in the air, the readiness of missile defense systems, and the fleet's rapid maneuvers signal that the aircraft carrier is not a passive target. For China, the decision whether to continue escalating or refrain depends heavily on quality of available information and the potential risk of retaliation. Toward the end of the first 10 minutes, the situation is typically still in the pre-kinetic phase with no missiles launched. However, the foundation for subsequent escalation has been laid. This observation suggests that in modern conflicts, the first 10 minutes are determined not by firepower, but by information superiority, system coordination, and the ability to maintain control of the situation under high pressure. If escalation continues beyond the first 10 minutes, the focus shifts from mere readiness to a real test of the resilience of both side systems. The U.S. fleet typically expands its defensive perimeter by engaging long-range assets, including attack submarines and land-based aircraft to create an additional layer of threat to its adversary. This move aims not only to protect the aircraft carrier, but also to disrupt China's continued tracking efforts. At this stage, the concept of distributed lethality begins to emerge. The aircraft carrier is no longer the sole center of power, but rather part of a distributed combat network. Every destroyer, cruiser, and aircraft has a role to play in sharing sensor data and interception capabilities. This makes a concentrated attack on a single target much more difficult and increases the planning burden for those trying to maintain a sustained kill chain. For China, the primary challenge is not only penetrating multi-layered air defenses, but also maintaining continuity of command and control amidst electronic pressure and rapid maneuvering by the enemy. Every small disruption in communications or data delay can diminish the effectiveness of strategic decisions. In a high-intensity conflict, Losing even a few minutes can mean losing an opportunity to act effectively. This observation confirms that a carrier targeting scenario never stands alone as a single action. It is always intertwined with political calculations, the risk of regional escalation, and the potential involvement of other powers. Therefore, many military simulations and exercises place a heavy focus on deterrence, strategic signaling, and escalation control rather than on the direct use of force. Ultimately, what happens after the first 10 minutes is determined more by human decisions than by technological capabilities alone. Modern weapon systems can engage in a matter of seconds, but the choice to press the escalation button remains in the hands of decision makers. In this context, 
The first 10 minutes serve as a critical window during which a crisis can be diffused or escalate into a full-scale open conflict. In many strategic studies, the phase following the initial tension is considered the most dangerous. As both sides increase their combat readiness, the room for misinterpretation becomes increasingly narrow. Defensive maneuvers can be misinterpreted as preparations for an attack, while electronic jamming can be perceived as an aggressive move. In this context, crisis ability is fragile and indirect communication via military signals becomes a decisive factor. For U.S. aircraft carriers, the continuity of air operations is a top priority. The flight deck remains active to ensure fighter aircraft can take off at short notice, either for cover missions or advanced reconnaissance. This activity itself serves as a strategic signal that the carrier remains fully operational even under targeting pressure. A sustained air presence enhances situational awareness and reduces tactical surprises. Meanwhile, from China's perspective, sustained pressure on the carrier strike group also serves a non-kinetic purpose. By maintaining tracking capabilities and implicit threats, China can test U.S. responses, gather operational behavior data, and evaluate the effectiveness of the adversary's defenses. In many exercise scenarios, this phase is seen as a strategic learning tool as important as open conflict. This observation demonstrates that modern maritime conflict no longer moves linearly from detection to attack. Instead, it unfolds in layers of interplay where pressure, deterrence, and escalation control operate simultaneously. While often perceived as a large target, the carrier serves as a center of operational stability designed to survive in a high-threat environment. Ultimately, the first 10-minute scenario is only the beginning of a much more complex process. It reflects the reality that modern warfare is increasingly determined by information superiority, command discipline, and calm decision-making. As long as these factors remain under control, initial pressure does not always lead to open conflict, but often remains at the level of strategic signaling and measurable deterrence. More broadly, this scenario underscores a fundamental shift in the concept of naval power. Aircraft carriers are no longer judged solely by their size or the number of aircraft they carry, but by their ability to survive and adapt in a multi-domain threat environment. Sea, air, space, and electromagnetic spectrum are now interconnected, making every tactical decision have strategic impact in a very short time. For military planners, the first 10 to 20 minutes after targeting constitute a critical evaluation period. The data gathered during this phase, from response patterns, reaction times, to the effectiveness of protection, is often more valuable than the outcome of the physical confrontation itself. In many cases, this kind of pressure is used to test limits without exceeding them, especially in the context of great power competition, where both sides are aware of the risks of open escalation. From a deterrence perspective, success is not measured by who fires first, but by who can maintain control of the situation without losing credibility. U.S. aircraft carriers are designed to remain operational under threat, while China's strategy emphasizes the ability to create doubt and increase the cost of risk for the opponent. The interaction of these two approaches creates a complex and unpredictable dynamic. This observation also suggests that modern conflicts are increasingly less likely to start suddenly. Instead, they develop through a series of gradual pressures, strategic signals, and measure responses. The first 10 minutes are merely the starting point of a chain of decisions that can last for hours, even days, without a single shot being fired. Thus. The question of what the incident in which China targeted a U.S. aircraft carrier in the opening minutes is more relevant as a study in crisis management than a mere combat scenario. It illustrates how great powers strive to balance demonstrations of force with restraint, where true success lies in preventing conflict, not winning it.